introduction to the intro. Uh, <laughs> and that is news uh, for JavaScript news for January 2016. So uh, current versions of Node are these. So please just make sure that I, I don't know. I always find it interesting. I don't update my Node all that often, and you know, it's usually like you know three uh, major versions ahead. So they're moving very fast. I, I'm actually not uh, particularly aware of what the um, the differences is here, but um, something that people may not be aware of is that there is an LTS uh, version of Node now. So that uh, is designed to be only accepting uh, all of the only accepting security and like major um, major things which need to be added. Um, it's an LTS release. It's stable, um, and then the stable release. Uh, uh, is, is also available. And the point is, is that uh, this one here is is for is makes your boss happy, and this one here is probably just as fine. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, really, the LTS is there because uh, you know it's designed it's, it's for, to make Node um, a better player in enterprise um, environments where things move a little slower. Um, and the fact is, like, yeah, Node is moving at like breakneck speed. So it probably is a good idea to have have um, some some have the LTS branch. Anyway, um, NPM is up to 3.54. So uh, again, um, I haven't looked into what what's um, changed here, uh, but uh, make sure you update your NPM regularly. You know, important because there's new features and things break all the time and there's problems. So just please keep your NPM up to date. Um, Interesting development. Recently, Microsoft has submitted a pull request to uh, Node 4 asking it to uh, add support for their JavaScript engine, uh, Shaka Core. So, this Shaka Core, I think it's even open source now. So it has to be, I guess. Uh, it's the JavaScript engine that's running in their new browser. Um, and uh, what this, this is designed to be a kind of like a drop in replacement for V8 in Node. Um, currently doesn't have support um, anywhere but Windows, only works on Windows. Um, but apparently the, the benefits here are that um, it's uh, faster. Uh, and it's, I guess, adding some more diversity. How they're doing it is uh, it's got based, so Shaka Core doesn't implement the same API as, um, as V8, so they've built like a little translation layer um, to make it work. Pretty cool. It's good. Good incentive. Uh, I, I'm actually I'm, I'm very surprised that this pull request even got opened, and like it wasn't just closed. Not we're not doing this. We're being crazy. Uh, they're, they're, they're very seriously considering doing this, uh, uh, and I think that's it's healthy. It's, it's showing maturity in the, in the community. Um, uh, go check out the, the issue. There's um there's a lot of uh, uh, it's it's probably not going to get merged particularly quickly because you'll notice here it's a pretty Pretty big pull request. It's uh, 4,786 files change. So, yeah, uh, it's probably going to take them some time to uh, to wade through that. So, yeah, I, I think I think they kind of have like a, a full. It's, it's probably a little bit inflated because the, I think they have like a, like full dependencies that they've copied in um, for, for good reason. But uh, but the yeah, feedback that I've I've heard is that. Um, this is surprisingly clean and surprisingly good. And also, this isn't the first time that Microsoft has done really interesting stuff contributing to Node. Uh, the split back in the day, um, this, I haven't been paid to say any of this nice stuff that Microsoft has done. Uh, but they, but uh, Microsoft sponsored the um, split uh, to get, how's it called? Boomsy. Yes, yes. Oh my god, it's too long for my brain. <laughs> <laughs> Libby V. Libby V exists through because of uh, a Microsoft sponsorship. So um, that's a it's, it's a cross cross platform I/O um, tool library. So that's really cool. Uh, you may have also heard about this known buffer vulnerability. Um, so the the ascent, the, the problem is that. You know, JavaScript is untyped. This is not a very big example, uh, I guess. But in this top top case, uh, okay. So the, the the problem is that when Node creates a buffer, it gives you. It's basically like a malloc if you're familiar with C or C plus uh, plus, and it just gives you a chunk a reference to a chunk of memory, and that memory may contain anything. 
Um, if you chuck in something like a string, it um, fills it with the, this content. But if you pass in a number, it just gives you, it allocates you a block of stuff. And it's not, uh, it's not hard to accidentally supply a number when you're meant to pass in a string. So the difficult, the problem is, is that uh, a number of uh, a number of packages, oops, uh, <laughs> a number of packages uh, have cases where there, there's possibilities that a number will go in instead of a string, which means that they could be exposing uh, just weird memory, um, completely um, could be anything on the system uh, to the to the client, which you know could include passwords uh, or any kind of sensitive information. And in fact, in the if you go back to the issue, uh, there's a there's a number of there's a really interesting test case that somebody has showing if you put any kind of sensitive information in your program, even if it's just a comment, uh, it doesn't take long. If you're if you're serving up um, chunks of um, non-zeroed memory. Uh, it doesn't take long to actually uh, leak whatever that information is. So it's, it's a potentially um, problematic thing. There's been a lot of emotional responses like this. Uh, so this because people can't believe that Node would, well, why, are you even, why is it even possible to serve up non-zero memory? Um, but the, I, the key thing here is that Node has a lot of different use cases and uh, you don't always want to do that for performance reasons because zeroing memory, as you can imagine, if you have a big chunk of memory, um, can take um, an uh, amount of time. So the general consensus is that it's not actually a bug with Node, but they could probably do something better about it. So they're looking at changing the API and they're trying to make it a little bit safer so that, because the people who, um, those packages that I listed before, the people who are authoring those packages aren't like beginners, and they made the mistake of accidentally um, revealing this. So it's not necessarily a bug, but it definitely could be better. And Node's also investigating the performance cost of um, actually just doing the zero fill um, of those chunks. So I thought that was interesting. It's, good, it's, a, it's a really good um, issue to go look at. So, another one. <laughs> uh, you might have seen this on, on uh, Hacker News. Is Express dying? There's some concern. Um, this guy, uh, basically, basically the, the problem is that uh, yeah. just, uh, well, a few years ago, um, the author of Express sold Express, which sort of seems a bit weird, sold Express to <laughs> Strongloop, uh, and then Strongloop just sort of didn't do anything with it. They, all they did is just put their branding on it and uh, left it. Now, Strongloop's been acquired by, by IBM, and uh, there's still uh, a lot of uncertainty about well, who owns the Express project because the main maintainer of Express, uh, this guy Doug Wilson, he he's not even on the he has no control over it really. There's an Express organization and then there's the Express project. Everything like and the Express project since the version four release has been getting smaller and smaller in scope because it's been pushing more and more responsibilities out to uh, third-party packages. Uh, this is a very long news report, sorry. Uh, so, anyway, point is, uh, this is a great example of um, poor, uh, a very poor relationship between corporations and open source. So, uh, you should go read that. Um, some, some choice quotes from uh, Doug Wilson. He says, uh, you know, he's trying to step away from Express. Uh, he's thinking about building something new, something different, um, perhaps something that supports HTTP2. Um, he's saying that, yeah, IBM forced him out of the repository. He doesn't want to give up on Express, but uh, you know, they forced him. Uh, he wants the Express organization moved to, to, he wants Express to be moved to the Express organization. They've been arguing about this for over a year, uh, and it's just typical uh, glacial progress from big corporations. Uh, and yeah, here we go. Express website says the Express project is sponsored by Strongloop. It links to this repository, but it's absolutely unclear to the main author how Strongloop is sponsoring the Express project. So I thought that was interesting. Uh, 
Um, so, but the, the reality is it's express now. It's probably totally fine. Uh, the Express project is healthy. There's enough people out there that um, are invested in it that even if even if uh, IBM changes it completely, uh, you'll be fine. There'll be something which will be Express doesn't even do anything really anymore. It's just sort of a set of conventions. Um, so uh, you'll be fine. And there's also a lot of great alternatives which are very similar, like Koa and. Um, they're looking into this thing called Pillar.js, which maybe you should have a look, a look into. But speaking of dying projects, uh, Meteor has finally added uh, <laughs> official support for uh, NPM. Uh, there's an interesting um, thread on on Hacker News at the moment about about this. Uh, a lot of people believe that you know, the the future of Meteor is bright. But, okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. That's the end of my music. Uh, I'd like to welcome up the first speaker. Um,